less regard for a gift he received than I had for this briefcase. I mistreated it on purpose. I kicked it around. But for its part, this briefcase has served me faithfully and well. It has contained my whole life. It stayed around and I carried it to my first parish. I put my sermons in it. I never spared it a thing. I once used it as a weapon against a vicious dog. And if you look closely, you can still see the bite marks in it. But look at it. Look at it. The handle still holds, the lock still locks, the bottom still contains whatever you put in it. It is a little worn, it is a little battered, but so are we all. <laughs> so are we all. <clears throat> and after 50 years and change, this briefcase is in better shape than I am. And at this rate, the sucker may be around to contain my ashes when I am dead. <laughs> it is my oldest, my oldest companion, my oldest possession, and my most faithful. But I still hate it, just as much as I hated it that Christmas so many years ago. But I could never get rid of it now, because it is my past. Oh, the past, beloved. We all have one. For every one of us, the past is a mixed bag that we drag around with us until we finally drop it into the grave. Our past is filled not only with joy, but with profound grief. Not just with laughter, but with bitter tears not only with accomplishments, but also with humiliating failures. We have all lived through miserable relationships and wrenching sorrows, life-threatening accidents, depression, illness, the loss of parents and loved ones. Our wounds are who we are. The past is no joke, but it is a blessing and a great gift. A gift from God our Father. A gift that we should appreciate more than we do because it is in the past. It is in the past that we find the strength to face the present and the future, whatever the future may be. Our past is what makes us tough and resilient and harder than diamonds. And at the same time, our past is what makes us compassionate for others who are going through what we have been through. And so we should rejoice this morning because God has brought us, God has brought us through it. We are a band of survivors, battered and beaten up, a band of survivors, often in danger but alive. And that's what Christian, that's what Christian believers are, survivors of the past who are not afraid of the future, who have powered through on the strength of the Holy Spirit and are able to do what St. Paul tells those Philippians, rejoice, in the Lord always, again I say, rejoice. But that attitude of rejoicing would be impossible if we could not look back at the past and say, the one, the one who have, has brought me thus far will take me the rest of the way. Do not worry about anything, St. Paul writes. <clears throat> Just let your needs be known to your Father, and you will be able to face your present challenges and your future uncertainties without fear or without anxiety. 
None of us knows the end of the road down which we are going. And there are some pretty scary possibilities out there in the future. But we are a little band of survivors, which means that you and I still have a purpose. We still have a purpose to our continued existence, and we will not be, uh, be abandoned even when that purpose is fulfilled. We will not be left alone. It was, it is, important that we should all be together this weekend because it is a landmark for all of us. 50, 50, 50. <laughs> 50 years have passed since the night we graduated from Alexander High School and a lot of water has gone under the bridge since then, and some of it pretty dark and roily. Mistakes were made, bad things happened, opportunities were missed. You and I cannot go back and change any of it now. Not even God can change the past, what has happened has happened. There are some things that it is too late for, beloved, but it is never too late. It is never too late to find some eternal grace because eternal grace is out there and is always beckoning to us. You don't get to be our age without collecting a whole briefcase load of tears and regrets. But what matters now is what happens going forward. So for heaven's sake, go home and do what your past has prepared you to do. Take care of the ones that God has given you to take care of lovingly. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Do that which is within you, beloved. Fulfill the promises that you have made, and if you can, and if you can't, don't worry about it. Don't judge other people by their ethnicity, or by their sexuality, or by their political opinions, or by their past. But instead, do what the Apostle Paul who had a muddy past, if anyone ever has, said that we ought to do, beloved. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about those things. Think about those things. Dwell on those things, not on the rest. But give thanks to God for all of it. Because the Lord has been in it with you from the beginning, beloved. And he will be with you to the end. And so, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.